Welcome to my channel, where the scariest stories come to life. Before we dive into today's chilling tale, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications, so you never miss a story. Now, let's get into the horror. L about 10 years ago, I befriended a lovely woman that I shall call Jade. Jade, like me, was quite interested in the paranormal. Our reasons were different, though, she, having lost someone, was curious about life after death, while I, having felt ghosts my whole life, wanted to hone my craft more. Jade had just joined a ghost hunter society in our state and was interested in starting her own local chapter. She hoped to gather a group to hunt in eastern Washington. She needed a sensitive for her new assembly and was very interested in my abilities. I didn't consider myself that experienced, but knew I had some talent for feeling ghosts and needed practice. Jade felt I should start with her house for some practice, since she and her family had first moved in during the 1900s, and there had been some activity. The activity increased after remodeling, and old pamphlets from the KKK had been found in her wall. She hoped some long-dead racist was not haunting the place. Luckily, the haunting seemed playful, almost childlike in nature. She didn't feel that it could have been her deceased son, believing he was too busy enjoying his time in heaven with loved ones. We didn't speak of him too much or how he passed, I never wanted to press her for details and possibly upset her. I could see she was still quite brokenhearted over his loss. She lived about two hours away from me in a tiny little town. Her dark green, white-trimmed house was adorable. It resembled a small Victorian cottage. It was a two-story house with a gingerbread-trimmed front porch surrounded by big shade trees that must have been planted when the house was built. The lilac hedge on the side was so old, it had grown into more of a line of lilac trees than a hedge. I loved this little place and wanted it for myself. She took me on a tour of her sweet place to see if I could pick up anything. I didn't sense a presence anywhere in the house or the usual feeling of being watched. What I continually saw were the paranormal activities the family had witnessed in the past. For instance, she took me up the narrow wooden stairs to two cute bedrooms tucked under the eaves. At the top of the stairs was a funky little cardboard door built into the wall. I told her I felt something had happened with that cupboard and baby clothes. She opened it to show me that it was now empty but a few months before, it had stored many baby clothes and items. Her and her husband had left the house locked up, only to return to find every item in that cupboard had been tossed down the stairs. I asked her if her large palm plant in the corner of the living room ever shook, and she told me that yes, especially during the renovation, when she knew the kitchen had been added on. A spirit had once been seen walking out the back door. She confirmed that her husband had seen a person walk through the back wall. I could see she used smudge bundles across the house, and she knew that she had been cleansing. I felt that the renovation had stirred up a few souls, but honestly, they seemed gone now. Hopefully, the KKK pamphlet left in the wall was hidden away long ago, though personally, I think they should have burned it. We decided to go ahead and take a walk around the yard and garden. I sensed old growth and beauty. I pointed out some heirloom flowers that she didn't know she had. I loved the garden and admired the large trees and lilac hedge up close. We walked along the front of the house, then I started up the driveway that ended at the back of the house. Jade was following me, and as I got halfway up the driveway, it hit me, the pain in my chest, a crippling, heartbreaking emotion that overcame me. It still makes me cry to this day when I think of it. My hands immediately went to my heart, and I began to sob. These were overpowering sobs that I had never experienced in my life. All I could mutter was, what happened here? I turned, and Jade stopped me, also sobbing, I'm so sorry. She joked, took a deep breath, and said, this is where Liam died, her son. I ran to her and held her in that driveway, both of us with tears streaming. She was trying to apologize to me but I wanted so badly to comfort her. I could tell at that point she was feeling a lot of pain, and it was physical pain. In her time of agonizing heartbreak, the poor grieving woman had to walk me, 
shaking, into the house, sat me down, and gave me a beer and a cigarette. She explained to me that a few years earlier, Liam's baby brother had been in a parked car in the driveway, and it began to roll down. Liam ran behind it, trying to stop it, and it killed him instantly. We sat and gathered our thoughts and emotions for a while. I was now prepared to feel that. I assured her that Liam was most likely not earthbound. I didn't know I had the ability to feel something like that. I was shaken to the core. It took me over an hour to calm down. About half an hour into the drive home, my throat began to swell and hurt. I did not feel well at all. I pulled over to call my best friend and tell her I was on my way home and was okay, I knew she had been worried about me and my ghost hunting. When she picked up and I tried to talk, I had lost my voice, only hoarse squeaks came out. It took me a few attempts to finally get her to understand that I was fine, just coming down with something. I made it home and proceeded to get so ill, it was one of the worst and only cases of bronchitis I had ever experienced. My chest burned, and I could not speak for two weeks. It took a lot of antibiotics to recover. I just know that the cause of little Liam's death was a sudden large tear in his heart muscle. I just don't know if it was my sickness from feeling this pain or the pain of his mother's loss, or if I just didn't know what I was getting into. That was definitely going to be my last ghost hunt, though. I had been part of a paranormal research team for several years. Each weekend, we go to a new location in our town that is said to be haunted. I will try to be very specific about what happened during our most recent investigation, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. This story starts with our investigation at a very old, haunted cemetery in our town called Jordan Cemetery. When we first arrived, it was still light outside, and we weren't very creeped out. We even felt comfortable enough to split up for a little while, and then things started happening. I was walking around the back right corner of the cemetery when I felt someone come up behind me and wrap their arms around me. I thought it was my boyfriend, who was also a member of our team, so I smiled and turned around, but when I turned, no one was there. We had split up, and my boyfriend was all the way across the cemetery, along with the other two members of our team, who were at different ends. I started getting really scared and went back to our meeting point. When we regrouped, it was getting very dark. We went over to sit on a bench near one of the graves when suddenly, my boyfriend and I saw a shadow duck behind a tree. We got up to investigate, and just as we got 10 yards away from the bench, I turned around and saw a small black shadow figure running toward us. I started freaking out and pointed it out to my team. All of us saw it at the same time and began backing away, but we managed to keep our cameras on it and caught it on film just as it started to fade away. Once it faded, we stayed for a little while to see if it would return, but it never did, so we turned and walked away. About halfway across the cemetery, we got a very strange feeling and stopped in our tracks. We stood in the same spot, dead silent, until a woman's voice broke the silence. It said, right now there is a, and the rest was unintelligible. My team and I went nuts. The voice was loud enough to be caught on our cameras. Just as we calmed down, we heard very loud music right next to us. We started turning around and looking for the source, and then I realized that I recognized the song. It was Somebody to Love by Queen, and it was coming from my iPod, which was in my bag and had been completely shut down. How it could have turned on and started playing music by itself is unexplainable. We started cheering and thanking the spirit for letting its presence be known, and just as we stopped, we looked up to see a large black figure of a woman standing across the graveyard from us, only to disappear. We got a very weird, uneasy feeling and decided to leave for our next location, which was another cemetery. There is still a functioning funeral home next to it, so I'll leave out the name. We didn't stay there for very long, and not much happened, except for this one incident. I was walking with my team when a random song popped into my head. I had never heard this song before, but I just couldn't get it out of my head. I thought things were going fine, but the next thing I knew, I was halfway across the cemetery from where I had originally been. My whole body was tingling, and my team was yelling at me to snap out of it. 
I asked what had happened, and they told me that I totally zoned out, started singing an eerie sounding song, and was staring off into the distance while wandering away from them. My boyfriend also mentioned that my eyes were very dilated at first. I thought they were pranking me and didn't believe them. I didn't want to believe them, but they swore on their lives that they were telling the truth and had gotten a glimpse of me on camera when I just started singing the song. I took part in my first ghost hunt for Halloween last year. I will try to recite my experience as best I can, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. The location was at a hotel and bar that has a reputation for being active. The building still operates as a hotel, so I will leave it unnamed. Suffice to say, we had permission from the owners before going ahead. I am a confirmed believer, but have never actively sought out the paranormal, so I approached the event apprehensively, but with an open mind. The event was a real eye-opener, and the story I'd like to share occurred during one of the vigils we held that night. To give you a quick layout, beneath the hotel runs a series of tunnels and rooms that make up the cellar. At the far end of the cellar is a narrow tunnel used as the barrel run for the bar. We were told that ordinarily, this room would be stocked with beer barrels, but on this night, it was empty. It was here that we decided to hold our vigil. The first thing we noticed upon entering the barrel run was the cold temperature compared to the rest of the cellar. This could be attributed to the time of year and the metal door that could be opened to drop barrels down, allowing cold air in. The atmosphere felt strange, unlike when I visited earlier. Turning off our torches, we weren't in total darkness due to moonlight shining through the barrel drop doors and an emergency exit light. We created an energy circle and called out for any presence to make itself known. We were rewarded with a soft tapping at the end of the corridor away from the barrel drop. We ruled out pipes, as no visible pipes ran through this part of the cellar, and the main pipe run was on the completely opposite end behind a heavy wooden door that blocked most noise. We had an interesting experience there earlier, where a member of the group ran out at high speed. Anyway, back to the tapping. We called for it to be repeated, and it was still faint and in the same location. One of the group pointed out a strange shadow that had appeared in the open doorway, connecting the barrel run to the rest of the cellar, at the same end where the tapping had come from. We all turned, and every member agreed they could see a shadowy figure at the end of the corridor. From where I stood, the shape of the body, shoulders, and head was clear. We were the only group in the basement at that time and shouted out to see if it was someone who had lost their group. We got no reply, but the shadow appeared to move in our direction. We encouraged the figure to approach us, but it stayed in the same position before disappearing. It didn't fade or walk away, it was there one minute and gone the next. We moved out of the main barrel run into a side room used for storing old bar furniture. The doorway we used was the only entrance away from the two sources of light we had, and this room was pitch black with the torches off. The moment we walked in, the atmosphere became very heavy, and it felt hostile to me. Other members of the group later confirmed they felt unwelcome in the storage room. We created a circle around an old table and called out for anyone present to make themselves known. One person facing towards the back of the room claimed they could see red lights flashing, which was great because that was where my back was facing. Calling out again, we asked if the male spirit we felt could do anything else. Suddenly, a loud noise of wood scraping across stone caused screams and numerous torches to turn on. The table we had circled had visibly turned slightly. All members denied accidentally touching it, so we turned our lights off and asked if it could do it again. We felt that the entity was a male and likely the same one we had seen as a shadow earlier. We waited, and apart from the red lights flashing, nothing happened. We asked if it wanted us to do something to show us, otherwise, we would leave. This was quickly followed by the unmistakable sound of a coin bouncing and settling on the floor behind me. We quickly turned our torches and went to investigate. The only thing I found that could explain the noise was a 10 pence coin. This could have been there before we entered, but it was a very distinct noise. Taking that as our cue, we left the room and ended our vigil. Thanks for sticking around till the end. 
If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to give the video a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a terrifying tale. See you in the next one.